Hi, I'm Mark Hennings. I'm one of the founders of EntryPoint AI. And today I'm gonna to show you how to use AI in Google Sheets. This is gonna make some tasks so much easier. It's gonna allow you to do things you could not do before with the standard out of the box functions in Google Sheets. I'm gonna show you a few examples and then I'm gonna actually show you how to do this and what the code looks like. I'm gonna provide you the code so you can just copy and paste it and show you the one modification you need to make to make it run for you. So here I have a list of topics. This could be anything. You could imagine it's the body of an email that you wrote. And then here I wanna generate a creative email subject line. But it's been a long day, I'm tired, I'm out of creativity, so I want a large language model to do this task for me. And here in column B, we are using a custom function called openai underscore chat. This is the function I will show you how to make. And then we're taking the cell value from A2. Uh, we're just making sure that's a text value, in which is a little redundant here. All of these are text values for sure. But then we are providing it with instructions in what's called the system prompt. So it says, you write catchy email marketing subject lines. Only return a catchy email subject line. No other responses are permitted. Keep it classy. Don't use quotation marks around the subject line. And then I'm passing a numerical value, 1.5. This is actually the temperature here. That's gonna make it a little more creative, a little more random, you might say. Um, and here we have the first example with A2. Then what's really cool is I can just drag this like any formula. It makes a bunch of API requests to open AI, and it gives me a creative subject line for each of these. How cool is that? So that's a creative use case. I'm also gonna show you some really practical, um, more technical use cases. So here we have data standardization. In this column A, I have a bunch of values that are kind of like true and kind of like false, but they are not just true and false, which makes them really hard to work with. Uh, anyone working with data really loves it when that data is more consistent. And sometimes we have to take our data through processes to make it consistent. And in this case, I just want either lowercase true or lowercase false. Now, if I were trying to do this with standard sheets functions, I would have to have this long list of keywords and I'd have to go through and check and a bunch of if statements and try to categorize them and find what all the possible variations are. With large language models, I can bypass all of that. I have this function, the same function we used on the other uh, tab. Here I convert it to text. This is actually why I added the two text is because I got some errors with the one and the zero values and this fixed it. But then my prompt is, you are standardizing data for a spreadsheet. Interpret the following value as either true or false based on which value it's most similar to. Only return true or false. No other responses are allowed. Okay, so then if I drag it down, boom, true or false, one or the other, nothing else. Um, so some of these, like the numerical one and zero, if you're familiar with computer programming, you may know that one is the binary for true and zero is the binary for false. These others are more intuitive, like yes, so, is more like true, it's affirmative, right? Um, even if we put affirmative, like these are all kind of synonyms, right? Um, see if it gets it true. Not false, so the opposite of that would be, the opposite of false would be true. Not true, the opposite of true would be false. So I'm pretty happy with how it did. The only one I saw um, that I was not happy with was YA. It says it's false for some reason. Um, Otherwise, I think they're all pretty good, like falsy is false. For this, I used a temperature, the default temperature of the method, which is zero. And that means there's no randomness. So every time I drag and drop this for the same list, I should get back the same answers back. I actually have another video all about how LLMs generate text. Um, and that talks a lot about temperature. So I'd highly recommend watching that video if you're interested in learning more about how uh, the randomness plays into things. Let's take a look at the third example I wanna show you, which is data extraction. Here I have some unstructured text. This is very common in, in business use cases. You could have a list of product descriptions or um, you know, web page content, 
and you want to extract one really specific piece of information from it. In this case, the unstructured text is just a sentence and it has someone's name in it. So I wrote a prompt, extract the name of a person from the text. Do not return anything except the name of the person. And I can drag it down, wait for my API calls, and yes, I get the person's name who is referenced. There are endless useful ways that you could apply standardization and extraction to make your business operations or your daily work more efficient. So now, how did I do this? How did I create a custom function in Google Sheets that calls OpenAI and does this magical thing? The secret is called Apps Script. You can find it under Extensions and go to Apps Script. This is essentially JavaScript. Uh, so if you know JavaScript, you basically know Apps Script. There'll just be a couple differences to learn, but you'll catch on very quick. Um, and you can actually define the custom function. So here, openai underscore chat. This is the exact function that auto completes when I start typing in Google Sheets. See, I hit equals and I start typing openai underscore chat. That is my function. I also even have this documentation so that it can provide useful little tips and things when I'm trying to use it in the spreadsheet interface. Now, openai chat function takes three parameters. These are the values you can provide it and that I showed you earlier. The prompt, which in general, I was just using the cell for the prompt. And then I was providing all my instructions in the system part of the prompt because the OpenAI models are trained to put more prominence and more focus and adhere better to what's in the system prompt. Then temperature is this randomness factor that I briefly mentioned. I have the other video that talks about uh, it can be from zero to two but zero to one is a more common range. I actually used 1.5 though, to get a little crazy on the email subject lines. And then what we do is we prepare a bunch of information that goes in our API request, everything that OpenAI needs to use the AI to generate a response. And I'll look at that real quick with you. So first we're putting the system prompt and the user prompt into this package. They need them labeled with this um, user and system string that then goes into this request body we're specifying the model so it's gpt4 you could also use gpt 3.5 turbo in here especially for simpler tasks uh, like some of the data extraction and that true false standardization example i'm sure gpt 3.5 could do a great job at you can also use a fine-tuned model name here which we do a lot of at entry point and i have other videos on fine-tuning fine-tuning comes in really really helpful when you start to feel like you're playing whack-a-mole with prompt engineering, or you just need to optimize costs or get better quality results that um, it essentially allows you to train the model on your own data. It could take my spreadsheet, export it to a CSV, pull it into entry point, and then I could make sure that it has the answers I want and I could train a model that, uh, that now is specialized in that particular task, whether it's standardization, data extraction, or the you know something creative like generating email subject lines. Um, so you can create fine-tuned models if you want and use them here all the same. Um, we're providing it those messages. We're providing it the temperature directly from this parameter. And then we're specifying max tokens as 256. That's about one to two paragraphs of text, which is more than enough for the examples I showed you. And I would just keep that on the low end uh, just to moderate your costs because when you're experimenting with prompts, Sometimes it will respond in, in like a whole chat GPT type of explanation when all you really want is like just true or false. And it can take a little bit to hone that in so you can uh, save some cost here if you're getting answers that are not what you really want to get back. Then we are preparing the actual request. This is a post request. Um, that's just what it needs to be for this particular API endpoint. We're sending it in JSON and we are um, actually providing it with that JSON, which is this body here. So all this information here, that includes this information. And now this includes this information. So all of our information is getting put in the payload. This is really important. This authorization header. This is where you put your API key right here. So this needs to be your API key and it's like a password. So anyone you share this sheet with who can open app script, they can see your password and that's something to be aware of. And you don't wanna share your password with everybody. 
Um, you don't want to publish a YouTube video with it in there where everyone can read it, um, which actually this is fine because I'm going to revoke it. And so if you try my API key, you're not going to be able to, to do anything with it. But this needs to be your API key, right? To use your account. I'll show you how to do that after we finish this line by line code review. So then we're just actually making the API call, which takes a few seconds. We're getting back some JSON, which we're parsing into an object literal. Don't get hung up on that. It just means we can work with it in our app script slash JavaScript code. And then we're pulling out the message that is the actual text back because there's a lot of other information we get back. We don't need most of it. So we're pulling that generated text back and returning it, which means it's a thing that fills in the cell when we are done using our function. So that's how it works. And now I'm gonna show you how to get this API key. You're gonna to go to platform.openai.com. It'll take you right here to the docs overview. If you just go to openai.com and you start trying to navigate, you'll probably end up at ChatGPT. So I just like to type in platform.openai.com. And then here in the sidebar, it'll say API keys. You do need to probably enter a credit card for this to work as well. And you can monitor your usage here on this usage tab. So I would highly recommend once you start doing this, like check your usage before you go overboard and make sure that uh, you didn't spend more than you really wanted to. If you're spending too much, you can do fine tuning or you can use uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo, both good options. So this is the API key that I currently have in there. I'm going to go ahead and revoke it with this trash can. I'm going to generate a new API key. You can name it something like Google Sheets or something more specific. You can use the default project here or create a specific one if you really want to be that organized. And then uh, make sure permissions are all. These other two probably won't be sufficient to, um, to use the API. Restricted, you could get in here and you could probably make it work, but um, just leave it as, as all unless you really want to dive in. Press create secret key. Now this is the only time you're going to be able to see this key. So make sure to copy it. And before you close this, go back to your app script. You're going to paste it in here. Make sure you still have bearer with a capital B and a space before it. And now you have your new key. Um, you actually need to press save, this little floppy disk icon right here, or do command S, control S, depending on your Mac PC um, shortcuts. Anyway, save it. And since I revoked the other one, this will only work if it's saved properly and it's loading and we're good. So it's using the new API key. All the code we looked at today is available to you for free. Just copy and paste it, put your own API key in there. It's in the video description. So I hope this really gets you off to the races with using AI and Google Sheets. There's a ton of potential use cases. It allows you to do things that were just not possible or not practical before. If you wanna learn more about fine tuning or other cool AI topics as I produce videos, please hit the subscribe button, like this video, leave a comment, I do read all of them. And uh, I enjoy hearing what people have to say. If you have video suggestions, I'd love to hear it. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.